After Hours continues now from Scotiabank Saddle Dome in Calgary. Jonathan Huberdo is ready to make his statement. I'm making this sound like it's a legal proceeding, but it's not. It's actually good news, Jonathan, as uh, since New Year's, you appear to be finding your game. I think it's 31 points in 37 games after tonight. Enough to get your swagger back? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, playing playing better, you know, since the new year. I feel, and uh, you know, I think it's a, you know, the confidence confidence is more back, and I can make some some more plays. So, you know, feel good to to help the the team a little bit more. Right. Well, just tonight, and we mentioned this with Connor, the importance of snapping the losing skid and getting this group back to where it wants. You get some power play uh, success as well. And just overall, how do you feel about your game and your night as this confidence continues to improve? Yeah, it was it was good. I think I thought Erlang, you know, we play play hard, play well defensively, and uh, you know, obviously with Bax, he's he's, he's a good uh, you know two-way center, and uh, we had some chances, and it was nice to get a, a PP goal from uh, from Weeks. Uh, Jonathan, we're not going to turn this into an autopsy on last season, uh, but there is a question or two, and I know you understand that. So I'll just ask you, uh, what was your overriding feeling about last season and that significant drop in, drop in production? Yeah, it's never easy. I mean, obviously coming off my my best year, you know, in, in Florida and uh, and uh, coming here, I mean, tough transition, you know, and uh, obviously would have liked to to be better in production uh, offensively you know it didn't work out but I think you know it's it's that, it was that kind of year and it kind of you know hurt my confidence a lot and um, you know even this year when I came back you know it wasn't there yet but I think I, I finally kind of turned that page and got my confidence back uh, you know after Christmas right when it does go that way uh, and I know that was sort of foreign territory for you but who do you turn to who do you speak with when it uh, wasn't going the way you wanted mentally physically it was kind of a, a tough time who'd you turn to yeah you, you kind of you know you kind of find yourself in a hole a little bit you know you're you're trying to get out of that and it's not easy and that's when I you know started to talk with a psychologist and you know some people um, you know around me obviously my parents and stuff like that but you know at the end of the day you have to get out this whole your, yourself but it's always nice to get some help and you know for the obviously the mental it's important yeah. to, to talk to people and get out of that your parents you talk to them a lot yeah I talk to we have a close family I'm lucky you know fortunate to, to have uh, parents that are there for me to supporting me and uh, you know my brother and my sister too not your mother look at right? my mom well mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there yeah, is. yeah there is yeah. Uh, yeah no it's it's you know they, they've always been there for me and uh, you know fortunate they, they you know it's through tough time too you really need these people and they've been there for me and it's uh, you know it's good to, to have my, my parents you know supporting me and the family travels well right they've come on the road a few times we've seen them uh, the outdoor game and certainly the father's trip just really supportive right yeah for sure I mean you know and I thought when I left uh, Florida maybe it was gonna get a little colder they weren't gonna come that, that much but uh, now they oh, you just can't get rid of them <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now they're coming and they spend Christmas again uh, you know for two three weeks so it's it's fun to have them around all right uh, let's talk about what's going right on the ice right now you've had that stretch in February where you had 20 points in 21 games uh, big flames guy asks ever since 2024 started you've been consistently performing Forming. Was there a specific event that became a turning point, or was it just suddenly going well for you again? Mark Savard started taping my stick, so probably That's probably right. help a lot. Okay, <laughs> we'll take your luck any way you can get it. <laughs> He'll be happy. I give him a, a shout out. Uh, no, but I think you know, I think before that, I, if I can remember, I had like a 12 games. I think point um, pointless. You know, and I didn't have a point, but mm -hmm. I think. You know, I was still making plays and it was coming, you know, and it was frustrating because I wasn't you know, getting anything on the board. But I just thought, you know, I stuck with it. And I think, I, I, you know, sometime it kind of it went through it and, uh, you know, it happened and kind of the gate kind of opened. So it was good. Uh, One thing you deserve credit for, Jonathan, is your honesty. Uh, even in the toughest of times, you were honest with the media, honest with yourself. And uh, there were signs of your brutal honesty way back in your days with the St. John Sea Dogs. So you go to Gerard Gallant one day, coach of the team, and you say, Coach, my uncle's in town. I want to stay in the hotel with him tonight. And you take the story from there. Uh, I know it's not a good story, but <laughs> it's a, yeah, I remember I told uh, I told Turk, uh, you know, I wanted to stay with my uncle. Uh, it was the Delta. I remember and uh, you know obviously uh, it wasn't to be with my uncle it was to be at uh, with my girlfriend at the time so I spent the night and and the next morning I felt so bad I was like 
You know, I'm not a liar. I got to be honest. So I got to. I, I went to him and I told him. And obviously, like you said, I think he he got my, he got mad at me, but I think it was just for keeping me keeping me uh, on a on a tight uh, tight rope. Well, actually, he later said that he had to fake being mad at you. He threatened to find you twenty dollars and said he might have to call your parents. And he he did neither. Listen, if I said to you, Jonathan, you could go on a white hot streak right now if you cut your hair like this like this Ooh. it's coming i know would I you know do it <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm not sure maybe i think i would i would <laughs> right now yeah it must I be nice to have those it options better huh, like Scott? That, yeah right <laughs> <laughs> Oof, what we, i wouldn't uh, do we envy you <laughs> <laughs> Me and uh, all right still with the quebec junior league um, a, a feature bout involving jonathan and a teammate well you and your uh, good friend well Mackenzie Weger has himself a night tonight. That's great to see. And you guys have such a past, such a history, such a friendship. But wait a minute. In junior, there was real hatred here. As you can see, Weger, Uberdo, like, are you ready to rumble? This is impressive. What? And he loves bringing this up because he. Oh, yeah. Look he at him. He's on, he's on top of me. Yeah. yeah. He's uh, obviously. How did this happen? I mean, I was coming after his teammate, and, and, and he came from, from nowhere, and obviously didn't know Weeks then, and didn't know he was a lefty, so Whoops. took advantage of that, and obviously I'm not a fighter, but uh, it's, uh, you know, we always go back to that, and obviously if he, he try, I try to chirp him, he's going to come back with that, that he, that he beat me up. All right, what a run you were on with the Florida Panthers a couple of years ago, 115 points to lead them to the President's Trophy. Uh, you had been there for 10 years, and before that, your family had vacation there every year for three or four weeks so it had become your home in every way and then one night in the summer after a pickup game general manager Bill Zito phones you and abruptly tells you you were traded to Calgary how long before that news actually sunk in yeah I think you know right away I remember um, you know getting that call I was like in, in the parking lot and you know having a beer with my with my my friends in the summer and you know get, getting the call obviously was i mean like i said it was kind of my you know my, my second home there and uh it wasn't easy obviously but i think you know it's more like that that weekend went by and i think that monday that's kind of you know when it, it sunk in and obviously you know you, you have to you have to turn the page you know at some point it's uh, hockey it's like that you know you think you're you feel you're you're at home and you know in Florida for 10 plus years mm -hmm. and and you get a call you just get traded you know and that's it that's how you turn the page so you have to make the transition. Ryan, a Florida rivalry. Well, yeah, you have this. Uh, Mark Savard walking. There you go. I, I gave you a shout out. The man who's responsible. Yeah. Yes, the, the stick taper yeah. whisperer. Um, but just the idea of of you know you and Weger then become friends after the bout in junior, but then you come to Calgary. And one of your biggest rivals from the Tampa Bay, Florida days is, of course, Blake Coleman. And I wonder how that frosty uh, reunion went when you first realized, oh, yeah, I'm going to be teammates with a guy I could not stand. He's actually a good guy. He, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's OK. And, uh, Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> we talk about it sometimes. And it's like, you know, the, in, the, in the playoffs, I feel we were always getting after yeah. each other, you know, every shift. and. You know that was his game. They were trying to get under his, uh, under our skin, and it actually works. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was like, no, this guy. I don't like this guy. But uh, when you come, <laughs> I mean, it's it's like all, like anybody. I mean, you don't like when you play against them, but you know when you play with them, it's, it's, it's a great guy. And you know, fortunate to to play with a guy like that. Uh, Ian asks uh, ask Jonathan which player he looked up to the most as a kid, and who he tried to model his game after. And I think this answer might involve a DVD. Yeah, I mean, you know, I would say Vanilla Cavalier first, but yeah. I know where, where we're going. We talked about it, but Alex Kovalev obviously was, a, you know, a guy that I looked up to when he played for Montreal, and uh, you know, I watched his DVD, a lot of skills, and and I had the chance to play my first NHL game with with him, so that yeah. was pretty special. So there it is, the Alex Kovalev Guide to Playing Hockey. You, you can get this now on eBay, a used one, for 8 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> the number one selling That's DVD it. in Quebec during that time. <laughs> Let's skip ahead to cars. Um, 
as always, you can tell when players are in this building by the collection of luxury cars just outside the loading dock parking lot here. Your first car would not have belonged there. In fact, it would have been towed away. Ryan. That looks like something I might roll in back there, but yes. Uh, where did the passion come from? Because I think everybody who knows you or follows you knows that the biggest passion you have is, is high-end vehicles. You've had to modify it a bit living with these Alberta winters, but what's that been like to uh, not only transition into truck country, but uh, where did the passion for the exotic automobiles come from? Yeah, you can see I, I, I kind of yeah. upgraded you yeah. know, from the <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, my dad sells cars. He has a used car dealership. There so I, I got done from him and uh, obviously he likes it and, oh, you know, kind of got the... He, he's like, uh, you know, you gotta gotta try to, to buy some cars, and I think I, I try to switch a lot to to get, you know, to be able to try a lot of cars, and you know, it's just, just been fun. I think. Uh, Did you hang on to any of them? Uh, I just have the Ferrari, the okay. blue Ferrari. I still have it in Quebec, but you know, it's it's harder to have. In Florida, it was easier to have like nicer car, oh, yeah. convertible. Here, you're going more with a truck. You're eons away from the 99 Saturn station wagon with no air conditioning. Then you upgrade it to a <laughs> Honda Civic with air conditioning, but you wouldn't turn it on because you were afraid you're going to burn too much gas. Uh, your first contract with Florida called for a $100,000 signing bonus. What's the first thing you bought with that? Um, that's a good question because I didn't buy a car. You know, usually Oh, I thought it was a Corvette. No, I no, mean, okay. I, I, pro I don't, I don't think I bought a car right away. But okay. with my signing bonus, I, I bought, I bought that on the Civic with that signing bonus. Oh, but perfect. it was cheap. My dad was like, you know, you're yeah, not gonna you're come in, junior. you're not right. gonna, you're not gonna yeah. come in junior and have a BMW. So, but, well, but what I, I get, did buy the car. Let's get to your social conscience. Uh, you do a lot of work with the foundation that provides health services in Laval, and here it's Hubie's Hangout. Tell us about it. Yeah, it's great. I think, you know, we're working with the Flame Foundation. You know, we, we can bring kids to games and uh, any any other people, any any foundation. So it's cool to have, you know, to be able to, to provide that for, for people in need and they don't have the chance to come to games. So it's fun to do that. And obviously a golf tournament for, uh, you know, a hospital back home where I was born. So we try to give it to... Last year was mental health. The first year was cancer. So we try to switch, you know, cause every year. So it's, uh, you know, it's it's good to give back. I feel, I feel, I think we have the chance to do it as a hockey player with her, her name, and it's it's always nice to see like some smile on, on people's face. Perfect. That's where we'll leave it, Jonathan. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Good to talk to you when things are looking up. There is Jonathan Huberdo in his second season with the Calgary Flames, regaining his confidence and with it his game.